and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? The New Babylonian Kingdom, approximately 87 years after it was founded by Nabopolassar, the father of Nebuchadnezzar in 626 BC, was destroyed during the time of Belshazzar, who was the last king 539 BC. Daniel chapter 5 records the death of Belshazzar, the last king of Babylon. King Belshazzar held a feast for his nobles, and he drank wine using the gold and silver vessels that had been taken from the Holy Temple in Jerusalem during the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar. He praised gods made of gold, silver, copper, iron, wood, and stone. However, suddenly on the palace wall in front of him, human fingers appeared and wrote the words, Min Min Tekel, a parson. King Belshazzar was greatly alarmed, and he trembled as he ordered the magicians, Chaldeans, and astrologers, those who possessed wisdom, to come and read this writing and make known its interpretation. But the astonishing thing was that not only could they not interpret the writing in the Aramaic language, which was the common international language of the time, but they also couldn't read it. This greatly troubled King Belshazzar, and he became pale, as did his nobles. At that moment, the queen entered the banquet hall to comfort the trembling and fearful King Belshazzar and suggested that they summon Daniel, who had served since the time of Nebuchadnezzar to inquire about the meaning. The queen referred to Daniel as a man filled with the spirit of the holy gods, a man of brightness, intelligence, and wisdom like that of the gods, and a man with an extraordinary spirit, knowledge, and wisdom. He can read the writing and make known to the king its interpretation. As the queen had described, Daniel read the writing, which no one else could, and explained its meaning word by word with the wisdom given to him by God. The inscription on the wall was mean, mean, tekel, a parson. He explained the meaning of the inscription as follows, mean means numbered, signifying that the reign of King Belshazzar has been numbered by God and brought to an end. Tekel means weighed, indicating that King Belshazzar has been weighed on the scales and found wanting. And a parson means divided, signifying that the kingdom of King Belshazzar will be divided and given to the Medes and Persians. According to the revelation of this writing, on that very night, Belshazzar, the Chaldean king, was killed, and Darius, the Mede, received the kingdom. At that time, King Darius of Media had formed an alliance with Cyrus II of Persia 539-538-530 BC, and Babylon was destroyed by the combined forces of Media and Persia. The destruction of Babylon occurred in accordance with God's decree. Babylon fell suddenly to Media and Persia as an act of God's sovereign judgment. In the first year of Darius's reign, when Daniel read the book of Jeremiah, he realized the prophecy that after 70 years, they would be set free 538 BC. It is stated in Daniel 9 to 1 in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, by descent a maid, who became king over the realm of the Chaldeans. This King Darius here refers to Cyrus II 539 to 538 BC, who is distinct from Darius I 520 to 2486 BC, Darius II 423 to 400 for BC, and Darius the 3rd 336 335 to 331 BC. Caixares II was the father-in-law of Cyrus II. Therefore, Ahasuerus, the father of Darius, is also different from the Ahasuerus mentioned in the book of Esther, which refers to Astyages, the father of Caixares II. This was not an ordinary time, it was a time of great change when the world's history was undergoing a total transformation because the mighty kingdom of Babylon fell to the joint attack of the allied nations of Media and Persia. Likewise, the year 538 BC was one year before the first wave of the Babylonian exiles returned, 
Approximately 67 years after Daniel was taken captive in 605 BC. Daniel, who was taken to Babylon as a teenager approximately 17 years old, then 1 to 1 minus 4, had now become an elderly man, around 84 years of age. During the reign of King Darius, Daniel held a high position and ruled over the entire kingdom of Darius. Daniel surpassed the other high officials and satraps because of his exceptional spirit. The other officials and satraps tried to find a reason to accuse Daniel and his administration, but they couldn't find any fault or wrongdoing in him because he was faithful. So in a cunning and deceitful manner, they devised a plan to trap Daniel by issuing a decree that prohibited anyone from making petitions to any god or man for 30 days, except to King Darius. They knew that Daniel served only the God of Israel without changing his faith. Therefore, they secretly sent spies to watch him. Before long, they discovered that Daniel was praying three times a day, kneeling in his upper room with windows open toward Jerusalem. They used this as a basis to report Daniel to the king. The king sought a way to save Daniel, but the wicked men hurriedly approached the king and insisted that the laws of the Medes and Persians could not be changed. In the end, following the king's order, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. But by a miraculous act of God, the mouths of the lions were sealed, and Daniel emerged unharmed. Later, King Darius had those who accused Daniel, along with their families, thrown into the lion's den as well. Before they even reached the bottom, the lions attacked them, breaking their bones. King Darius then sent a decree to all the nations and peoples of every language throughout the known world, stating, I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on their earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. As a result of these events, Daniel held a high position during the reigns of both Darius and Cyrus. After these events, Daniel received the prophecy of the 70 weeks in Daniel chapter 9. The prophecy of the 70 weeks given to Daniel can be broadly divided into three parts. The first part consists of seven weeks and 62 weeks which states, from the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the Anointed One, the ruler, comes there will be seven sevens and sixty to sevens. 